Okay. Oh yeah. All right. Thank you for coming. Um, we're. I'm Susan Dirksen from CPI, and this is a press conference of CPI and San Diego State, along with Council Member Marty Emerald. And um, what we're going to do first is we're going to describe the study that we're releasing today and our policy recommendations. Um, and then we're going to have a couple of taxi drivers talk about their personal experience, and then we're going to hear from Council Member Emerald. So first, I'd like to introduce. Professor Jill Espenshade from San Diego State University. If you don't have one of these press releases, or if you do, the speakers' names and titles are on the back. Okay, or you can get one of these from me. Good morning, my name is Jill Espenshade. I'm a professor of sociology at San Diego State University. Along with 12 of my graduate students, many of whom are here today, we conducted the first independent survey of San Diego taxi drivers. We surveyed 331 taxi drivers in March and April of this year by approaching them randomly at taxi stands at 25 sites throughout the city. We found that 97% were male, 94% are immigrants, and by cross-referencing a list of all licensed taxi drivers and owners, we found that almost 90% of licensed drivers do not own the taxi they drive or the permit they drive under. They lease those from a permit holder. That is, they are lease drivers, and our report focuses on those drivers, the vast majority of the drivers out on the street. The taxi system as it stands creates extreme hardships for taxi drivers and safety concerns for both passengers and the public. Drivers are driving unreasonably long hours, a median of 71 hours a week. This causes such accidents as the Stingray a couple years ago where a taxi driver nodded off and plowed into a crowd in front of a nightclub. But uh, also importantly, in the 71 hours, taxi drivers are barely making what a minimum wage worker makes in 40 hours. Their medium wage is $4.45 an hour, and this includes tips. The biggest portion of the taxi fare that you pay and the tips that you give to the driver actually goes to paying the lease. Leases are untenably high because of an unregulated market in the resale of taxi permits. Taxi permits are issued by the city for $3,000. However, they don't issue them very regularly because they don't want to saturate the market. There's therefore an open market on the resale or transfer of permits. This unregulated market has a resale value that's 45 times the $3,000 that's originally paid. People are paying as much as $140,000 for the permits. This creates a number of problems. First, this, uh, these permits are city property, yet the city is not getting any of the revenue from the resale of these permits beyond a small administrative fee. Secondly, lease drivers are stuck at the level of lease drivers. They cannot become owner-operators because the permits are so expensive. Third, because the permits are so expensive, owners need to recoup their investment and therefore charge high lease rates. And this drives drivers to drive long hours because they need to pay that lease and still make a meager living to support their families. Leases are usually for seven days a week, 12 hours a day. Any time during that lease period the driver is not driving, they're not only losing income, they are incurring debt. So if they don't drive because they're tired or sick or their child is sick or because someone vomited in the car and it takes hours to clean, they are both losing income and having to pay out the lease for those hours. Drivers' hardships come from this unregulated market and high lease rates, but also from their status as independent contractors. Drivers neither have the protections of employees nor the benefits of small business owners. Because they're not employees, they don't have the right to minimum wage and overtime. Neither are they covered by workers' compensation, and they're in one of the most dangerous occupations in the United States. Not only do they not have workers' compensation, but if they're injured in an accident in the taxi, they are not usually covered by the owner's insurance. 
and 99% of them are not getting health insurance through their jobs. In fact, 71% have no health insurance. They're also not afforded the common practices that are given to business owners. Half of them do not have a written contract for their lease, and more than half of them are not getting regular receipts for their lease payments. And those payments for 97% of them are made at least partially in cash. So they have no documentation for their largest business expense. Reform is greatly needed not only for the well-being of the drivers, but also for the safety of the public. One of the graduate student researchers, Karina Rust, will be speaking to you about what we found in terms of safety concerns. Hi, my name is Karina Russ. I'm one of the graduate students in the sociology department at San Diego State University. Um, I was, I'm part of the research team that conducted this study. Um, and from the beginning of the project, it was obvious that San Diego taxi drivers were experiencing threats to their health and safety every day. On one of the first days that we went out into the field to collect surveys, my research partner and I spoke with a woman who had been driving for many years. And she explained to us that she had recently been released from the hospital after being taken into the emergency room with flu-like symptoms. She had been driving for several days with a high fever and dehydration and eventually needed emergency care. But unfortunately, she did not have any form of health insurance, so she was charged a hospital bill of more than $4,000. And that's $4,000 for having the flu. But that was not all. She actually owed the lease payments for the days that she was in the hospital. Not only did she not receive income for those days, but she actually had to pay money to be sick. And unfortunately, stories such as these are not rare. Two thirds of drivers reported that they must pay the lease for days that they do not drive, often due to illness. Drivers must face the reality of needing to work a median of 71 hours a week to only take home an average of $317. But despite working such long hours, 71% of drivers reported to us they have no form of health insurance. And additionally, more than half of the drivers reported having children at home. Nearly one third of them are also uninsured. This creates a situation where a parent is working excessive hours away from their children and is still unable to provide basic health insurance for his or her family. Drivers also experience threats to their safety while on the job. The majority of lease drivers are not covered for injuries or accidents by workers' compensation or for their owner's auto insurance. This is troubling considering the widespread reporting by drivers of vehicle maintenance issues. While conducting a survey, one of the researchers on this project was shown a dashboard of a taxi that was covered in sticky notes. The driver removed the notes for a researcher, showing a dashboard of warning signals that had been illuminated, including the check engine light. When the researcher asked about the lights, the driver reported that his owner was refusing to repair the vehicle, and he had to cover them up because, quote, it makes customers nervous. A driver who sat down for an in-depth interview with one of our researchers also reported having problems convincing his owner to make repairs on the vehicle. He claims that his owner wanted to remove the tires from his car to place on another car for MTS inspection. The driver refused and was fired as a result. Self-reported stories from drivers such as these indicate that safety inspections may be inconsistent or insufficient, which places the drivers' and customers' lives at risk. And therefore, I encourage the City Council and the people of San Diego to bear witness to the suffering of taxi drivers and to participate in reforming the industry. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to hear briefly from Peter Brunel, the Research Director at CPI. And again, if you have this press release, all of the speakers' names and titles are on the back. If you don't have one, uh, see Dominique over there. Okay. Hello, uh, as Susan mentioned, my name is Peter Brownell and I'm the research director at the Center on Policy Initiatives. And I've had the pleasure of working with Professor Esben Shade and her graduate students on the, the report that we're releasing today. Um, to talk to you today, I brought along um, the Metropolitan Transportation Systems Ordinance 11, which in 44 pages uh, describes the rules for the taxicab system in the city of San Diego. Um, and it describes in great detail what uh, taxi owners and taxi drivers must do down to, for example, the maximum height of shorts the drivers can wear above their kneecaps, right? So it goes into great detail. Uh, but one thing that's notably missing in the 44 pages of Ordinance 11 is any regulation of the relationship between taxi cab owners and those drivers who lease them. Does MTS say that the owner has to provide the driver with a written copy of the lease? No, MTS doesn't. Does MTS say that 
owners have to provide drivers with receipts for the, the lease payments that they make. No, there's nothing in Ordinance 11 that requires that. Um, our survey of drivers found that without any meaningful regulation of the relationship between taxi owners and lease drivers, drivers face poverty, earnings, and working conditions that would be illegal if they were statutory employees rather than so-called independent contractors. But it doesn't have to be this way. Other major U.S. cities guarantee drivers certain rights. Um, and I brought along bills of rights, drivers' bills of rights from the cities of Chicago and New York. Um, both of these bills of rights guarantee drivers the right to a written copy of the lease agreement. Um, and in fact, in Chicago, there's a standardized lease agreement that owners must use that's, that was created by the city. Um, both cities also guarantee in their bill of rights that owners must provide to lease drivers itemized receipts for the lease payments that they make. Um, more importantly, both these cities and a number of others um, have, have maximum lease rates that uh, an owner can charge a driver. And these maximum lease rates or lease caps help to assure that drivers get an equitable share of the fares and tips that they collect. Moreover, the bills of rights in both New York and Chicago protect drivers from retaliation on the part of owners. Um, and right now, drivers in, in San Diego have no such protection and their lease can be terminated at any time for any reason by the driver, by the owner, rather, of the, of the cab that they drive. In many ways, addressing the threat of retaliation is the most fundamental step in addressing all the other problems that we highlight in our report today. Um, workers can lose their livelihood for the simple act of speaking up at a public meeting. Now, the mayor has committed to reforming the taxi industry, but to gain the full participation of all the drivers, and particularly the lease drivers, which make up almost 90% of the, the, the taxi driver workforce, we need to make sure that that participation in reforming and creating a better taxi system for San Diego doesn't cost drivers their jobs. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to hear from a baby who can tell you all about the retaliation issue. Hi, my name is Abebe Antalo. Uh, I am driving this uh, taxi cab for over 11 years in uh, San Diego International Airport. Uh, because of I was organized under United Taxi Workers, and uh, we fight about drivers' rights. So because of the retaliation, I lost my job. In, October 2012. This time I'm not driving. Uh, what's happening in there is uh, Ordinance 11 is Ordinance 11, 11 is as like a slavery agreement that's imposed on us, on taxi drivers. That is nothing positive talking about us. Everything negative about us. And then uh, in the airport, what we've been fighting was openly talking about on the media, saying that. Uh, voucher thing, all kind of things. We've been paying for the owners. We are not owning the media. We've been paying for the owners who are going free. Then opposing that, we are uh, fighting with UTW and make the line straight so we are working now together. Uh, uh, of that, uh, I think San Diego State has done all kind of detailed study on these things. Uh, I may think that the, the city council will apply this and. Uh, take us out from this San Diego uh, taxi business mess. Thank you. Okay, we're going to have questions at the end, but right now uh, we want to hear from one more driver. This is Adbi Ali. Good morning, all of you. Uh, my name is Abdurashid Ali. I came from Somalia. I left it there because of war. I came, I came to San Diego because of my uncle Lever here. I've been driving a cab in San Diego in the last five years. To tell you the truth, it's very difficult to make a living as a taxi driver. It takes so many hours driving to pay the lease. The owner is raised the lease. With no warning, no notice. 
I drive 12 hours a day, almost every day. It's tough to walk that much. Almost have no time with my five-year-old daughter and my wife. But there's no choice. But it's necessary to make the lease anyway and to make any money. And also, in addition to that, in San Diego also, so many seniors and disabled live here, often need a ride as part of their daily life. They just often need to go one or two blocks, and we take them. That's the kind of service we provide San Diego. And we are the drivers of San Diego, not the drivers of the owners. So I thank you all of you and thank for San Diego State to make study, to make it clear what's going on in the cab industry. So thank you very much. Okay, and finally, Council Member Marty Emerald. I think that our last speaker said it best, that uh, these drivers are drivers for the people of San Diego and not necessarily drivers for the owners of taxi cabs. And unfortunately, what you've heard today is correct. Ordinance 11 is uh, tilted uh, in favor of the taxi owners. Uh, there are few rights afforded for uh, the drivers who are considered to be independent contractors. Uh, as the chair of the Taxi Advisory Committee for the last couple of years, uh, we attempted to change that. Uh, we have given the drivers a voice on the Taxi Advisory Committee, uh, meaning that they can now uh, elect other drivers to speak up for the rights of drivers. Uh, but uh, the city of San Diego is in a position now where we very well may be taking back the regulation for taxi cabs, in large part because of the unaddressed concerns, the unresolved concerns of drivers like those you've heard from this morning. Uh, they do work unconscionably long hours, bring home very, very little pay, and in large part because of the, the large uh, amount they have to pay to lease those taxis. Uh, uh, it just it takes hours and hours of work uh, every day of the week just to cover their nut, just to, just to pay for that lease and gasoline and often maintenance exp expenses on taxis that are not being repaired by some owners. This is not throwing all of the owners <coughs> under the bus, so to speak. Uh, there are many fine taxi cab owners in the city, and, and uh, owning and driving a cab, hard work, I know. I did it 30 years ago in Portland, uh, and I owned a piece of a cab as well. So I, I know how the system works and how it ought to work. And these drivers ought to be afforded at least, at the very least, the same protections as employees anywhere. Uh, and uh, if that means that we have to extend the living wage ordinance to include our cab drivers, so be it, we'll take that approach. I'm looking forward to working with the mayor uh, as we move forward on reforming the taxi industry. Um, I think that we're, uh, we're extending the, the contract with MTS while the mayor brings on a consultant to take a look at all of the many issues involved here. Uh, workers' rights, uh, the issue of uh, documentation, uh, the issue of uh, pricing, uh, issues of public safety, uh, and, uh, and we take a look at all of it to see how best to create a taxi system in our city that not only takes care of the drivers, but is sustainable, where anybody who wants to drive a cab and be a professional in this transit industry uh, can make a living. Uh, I know back in the day when I was driving, we could. Uh, it was set up for drivers to be able to sustain themselves, to make an, an okay living, but not, not at uh, driving 70 or 80 hours a week. Uh, that just, uh, it, it can't sustain itself, and uh, public safety really is at risk if we allow this situation to continue. Uh, so you've got my pledge as chair of the Public Safety Committee that we will continue to uh, pursue reforms in the taxi industry. We will work very closely with the mayor's office uh, on crafting those reforms, and we will include our, our drivers and our owners in the process. A uh, question was raised about the permits. I also have concern about the unregulated uh, buying and selling, trading of permits out on the street. Those are 
those permits belong to taxpayers. They belong to the city of San Diego, and we need to have a hand in making sure they, they wind up with the, the right people who are going to respect the privilege of having a permit and, and by virtue of that, respect the rights of drivers throughout our city. So we thank you for your uh, attention to this and, and pursuing this issue. We thank CPI, uh, as always, for their community service and uh, the researchers at San Diego State. Uh, I'm sure that it was an eye-opener for the students involved and uh, that they will be part of a, a generation that will help to reform this industry uh, so that our cab drivers uh, achieve the success uh, and the respect that they have so, so rightfully earned. Thank you. Okay, are there any questions for anybody? Um, uh, there have been some minor changes and reforms with regard to inspections of taxi cabs, uh, but uh, nothing substantial, nothing to address the basic concern of uh, the money that uh, these drivers have to pay for leases uh, and the lack of protections that they have as part of those contracts. And do you know why there haven't been any changes? Are there things blocking, blocking the city from making changes now? Or? You know, we, uh, we have to uh, go back to the MTS board. And that board of directors has to be willing to truly listen to these drivers and their issues and recognize that it is the, the, the responsibility of the MTS board uh, to regulate an industry that I believe is out of control. And uh, uh, so far the majority on that board has said it's, they're not going to get involved in private contractual arrangements between the owners and the drivers, but at some point we do need to demand some minimum requirements and make sure that uh, the owners and the drivers adhere to those requirements and if they don't there have to be some sanctions. Uh, uh, people have to know that this is not just a contract between a lease driver and an owner. This is about uh, a broader issue of public safety and, uh, and public transportation and making sure that we have uh, 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 the taxi industry, uh, that there's, there's a fair playing field for the drivers and that uh, we're doing all we can to protect the public as well. So it's a change in culture, I think. And that's part of the reason that the, the, the mayor is so insistent on bringing it back into the city. Uh, because uh, uh, through our public safety committee and city council, uh, we do believe that the, the drivers are going to get a better shake. We're, all, we're also going to respect the owners and their rights as well, but create a system that, again, protects the public and protects uh, those people who are behind the wheel. Uh, providing an essential public service. Any other questions? Yes. Is this issue specific to San Diego, or is this going on elsewhere? There have actually been reports done in other cities that show uh, high levels of exploitation of drivers as well. Um, in Los Angeles, uh, they're making more than they make in San Diego, but still not a living wage and working untenable hours. Different cities have different systems. So in Las Vegas, they're actually employees and they are gu guaranteed minimum wage and overtime. They have workers' compensation and other benefits. Um, so there have been problems in other cities, but many cities have actually adopted lease caps. M many, many cities have vehicle safety regulations. They have limits on how many miles a taxi can have, how many years old a taxi can be. Those are not uh, regulations in San Diego. So some cities uh, have been making really positive steps towards dealing with some with some of these issues but many cities still have taxi drivers who are making even less than minimum wage is it is it fair to say that uh, the issue here is a little bit worse than it is elsewhere uh, we don't know that it's necessarily worse or better but when you have an industry where the bulk of your lease drivers in this case 94 percent 90 
Ninety percent of the drivers are immigrants, usually some of the newest immigrant groups. Uh, it's uh, ripe for exploitation. And uh, every city should probably uh, take a review of this issue and, and make sure that if there are problems, that those problems are addressed. As I tried to highlight, I mean, I think some of the, the problems, I mean, it's very difficult to regulate um, the conditions for independent contractors. And as, we, as Jill mentioned, in some, in Las Vegas, for example, they're directly employees. But I think that um, other cities have done more um, in reforming the industries and creating, as I, as I mentioned, regulations um, of the relationship between the owners and the lease drivers. Um, and I think San Diego really needs to catch up on that. Um, you know, it's definitely a, a problem with that relationship, but San Diego really hasn't taken the steps to make sure that there are really any um, regulations in place in that in that critical relationship. So, and, and that's led to many of the problems that we see in the report that we're releasing today. Okay, any other? Other questions? Yes. Questions No, I'm just uh, driving a cab, yeah. And are you worried about retaliation for speaking out about this? No, actually, um, uh, we have been, we tired of being, not speaking up, but this is the time to speak up and our voice to be heard to the city. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? All right, thank you all. We have uh, plenty of copies of the report if you didn't get it, and um, the press release with all the names of the speakers. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna just call you and uh, report what you get.